from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We had a few showers overnight. More showers, thunderstorms are developing along that front. They're continuing to work their way in here. Some could be strong to potentially severe. I'll have the latest. A late night house fire kills several pets. What are some investigators are saying about what sparked those flames? And as we wait for those storms outside with live cam low clouds and about 66 degrees, it is humid and warm right now. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is October 28th, and this is what we are all watching this morning. On based on what Mike was telling us yesterday, staff, things are right on time so far. Yes, they are. Um, happy Friday, by the way. Thanks for joining us. I heard some of the storms last night. What did you hear? Just uh, saw some sprinkles on the windshield this morning as Good. I came outside. What about you, Mike? Uh, just a little bit of, you know, wet streets here and there coming into work. And so just watch out for that. But then, yeah, the timing still looks like it's going to be moving through town right about at the uh, the heart of the commute and moving on through throughout the morning hours and then getting on out of here by noon. So that timing is still just about what we were talking about yesterday. Right now, it looks like the roads are fairly dry over there. 10 at 410. And then once again, take a look at radar and there was about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, there was hardly anything showing up. But now, obviously, we're seeing this line develop here. A few thunderstorms in there, and uh, it's moving at a fairly decent clip. And this, like I said, will continue its eastward progress moving through town right about at the heart of the, the morning commute. And then once that moves on through here, it is going to uh, produce some pretty good winds in behind it now. We still have the uh, threat for some severe weather, isolated um, high winds, hail. That's going to be the biggest threat. The higher risk for anything severe is going to be in our extreme eastern counties down there along the coastal plain. A stray isolated tornado can't be completely ruled out. Not very likely, though. High winds look like that's going to be the biggest threat. And as far as rainfall, Half an inch inch of rain is going to be more of the, the widespread lesser amounts further to the southwest, greater amounts up to the northeast. And then, of course, there's going to be localized heavier downpours here and there. Temperatures are in the mid 60s all around the area, and we've got a fair amount of humidity. Mold is on the low side. Update account will come out later on this morning. Grab a raincoat before you uh, head off to work and to the bus for this morning. Showers and thunderstorms temperatures really won't be dropping all that much. Then later on today, lots of sunshine. Good looking day is going to be very very windy winds out of the northwest, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting 78 degrees, and then some cooler mornings, setting up for a good looking weekend. But we're going to continue to track the storms all morning long and have the latest throughout GMSA. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, a house fire near Clark High School took the lives of five cats and a dog late last night after around 930 near I-10 and De Zavala on the northwest side. When firefighters got there, flames were already shooting through the roof. They had the flames knocked down within about three minutes initially, but it flared back up and crews had to go on the defensive. SAFD says the home is a total loss because it is no longer structurally sound. There were no injuries to the two people living in the home or the firefighters. One cat was able to make it out alive. Our investigators say it appears to be accidental, but they are still looking into it. Now to the January 6th rioter seen by the nation on video dragging a police officer at the Capitol that uh, as that officer was attacked. Now that rioter has been sentenced to more than seven years in prison. ABC's Pierre Thomas talks with the officer about that day he thought he was going to die. In court, former D.C. police officer Michael Fanone recalling the moment he thought he was going to die. It was all caught on video in one of the most infamous pieces of footage from January 6th. Fanone's police body camera showing the crazed mob swarming him, dragging him, and beating him, telling me in the days just afterward. They were stripping my gear off of my vest, they stripped my badge off, my radio. At one point, people started chanting, uh, kill him with his own gun. Today, the man who dragged Fanon into the mob, Albuquerque Head, was in court to face sentencing. Listen to the moment of their encounter that day. Head saying, I'm going to try to help you out here. You hear me? Fanon replies. Thank you. But seconds later, Head is calling out to the violent mob. Hey! I got one! Dave Fanon told the judge, no mercy. Your Honor. I would ask you to show Mr. Head the same mercy he showed me on January 6th, which in case there's any question in this courtroom, is none. The judge apparently took heed, sentencing Head to seven and a half years in prison, 
one of the harshest penalties yet for crimes during the insurrection, almost matching the eight years the Justice Department had requested. The judge was stern in handing down the sentence, offering this blistering assessment, saying the suspect had hunted for known as prey and delivered him as a trophy to that mob. Pierre Thomas, ABC News, Washington. The latest government report shows the U.S. economy rebounded strongly in the third quarter. The better than expected estimate from the Commerce Department showed the nation's gross domestic product grew after having shrunk in the first half of 2022. Stronger exports and consumer spending backed by a healthy job market and lower gas prices helped restore growth in the world's biggest economy. Employers have added an average of 420,000 jobs a month this year. That puts 2022 on track to be the second best year for job creation in Labor Department records going back to 1940. In Oklahoma, eight people are dead following a house fire near Tulsa. Police are now investigating it as a homicide. Police have confirmed that a family of eight, including six children, lived in that house. They are not identifying the victims at this time or providing any specifics on cause of death or possible motive. The U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosive is ex insisting in this investigation. A car crash that left four teens dead in New York may have been linked to a TikTok challenge. Buffalo police say a total of six teenagers were in a speeding Kia that crashed earlier this week. The car had been reported stolen Sunday evening. All five of the passengers were ejected from the vehicle. Four of them, ranging in age from 14 to 17, were killed. Buffalo police say the teens may have been participating in a TikTok challenge that encourages people to break into Kia cars using cell phone chargers. Many police departments around the country have reported increases in Kia and Hyundai thefts since that video was posted. Time now, 436 and 66 degrees for now. Astros get ready for game one of the World Series tonight. Find out what's so special about Astro pitcher Justin Verlander, who's starting things off for the Strohs in game one. And a quick look at the roads with trans guys. Slick roads out there. We're looking right now at I-37 at South Cross and Loop 410 at Broadway. And waiting on some storms. Mike and Stephen will be busy later this morning. We're tracking that line as it develops to our west. We'll be right back. Check out who made it out to big game coverage last night between Brandeis and Clark at Ferris Stadium. UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer scouting during their bye week. Clark with the ball, but not anymore. There's trouble on the snap, ball on the ground. Dylan Cowan scoops it up for Brandeis, taking it back 25 yards for the score. Cougars claw back. Chris Gertz forces his way in from three yards out to even the game at 7-all. Second quarter, quarterback J.C. Evans standing tall finds Rafe Clendenin over the middle. The 29-yard pitch and catch puts Brandeis back on top 14-7. The final from Ferris, 35-28. Brandeis wins. Fresh off their win against Seguin, the Canyon Cougars hosting Mac last night in New Braunfels. Cougars on the hunt first quarter from the Mac 24. Quarterback Deuce Adams drops back, fires to the sideline for Daniel Inman, makes the catch. He tight ropes the sideline for an early Canyon lead. The final from Canyon, 43-14. Cougars get the win. Good luck to San Antonio FC tonight when they host the Oakland Roots SC in the Western Conference semis at Toyota Field at 730. It's after finishing with the best record in the USL and our top seed heading into their first postseason match. And they're a really talented team. It's, you know, you, you see that all over the league with the, the games that they've had this year. They've gotten some good results and they can beat anybody on any given day, which makes them really dangerous. And, you know, we're going to, it's going to require us to have 100% uh, focus. Oakland overall, they're, they're, they're a good team and they're, you know, it doesn't matter that they, that they finish seventh place in, in our conference. They, they just beat the second place team. So obviously that's a team you got to respect. Houston Astros will be sending Justin Verlander to the mound for their starting pitcher in game one of the 2022 World Series. As a result, the 39 year old would become only the second pitcher to start a World Series game in three different decades, joining Roger Clemens. He's previously started in 06 and 2012 for the Tigers, then 2017 and 2019 for the Astros. But strangely enough, Justin has never won a World Series game. He's 0 and 6 with an earned run average of 5.68. He's hoping to change that tonight. I think Dusty and I both would like to check off, uh, you know, uh, my first World Series win, his first World Series championship. I think, um, you know, that would be uh, a wonderful thing for us to have on our career list. Um, 
you know, I, I think I'm not, it's not my goal though. My goal is not to go out there and win a baseball game. Um, you know, there's been games in the World Series that I don't deserve a win. There's been games that I thought I pitched well enough that we could get a win. It just didn't work out. It just, you know, at this point in the season, personal goals like that just don't matter. The 2022 World Series between the Astros and Phillies starts tonight at uh, 7 o'clock in Houston. The teams will play again tomorrow in Houston, and then the series shifts to Philadelphia next week. And I understand with the weather here in Texas, they are going to keep the roof closed at Minute Maid Park. That's probably a good move. Yes, ma'am. Time now, 442 and 66 degrees for now. Texas Children's Hospitals in Houston among the get, those getting hit with more pediatric patients dealing with respiratory illness. Coming up next, one medical expert there says it's her biggest worry right now. And welcome back. It's 445. Hospitals nationwide, including here in Texas, are getting capacity limits as a wave of pediatric respiratory viruses are spreading among infants and children. ABC's Rihanna Nally has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look on the front lines of pediatric hospitals across the nation. We're seeing kids who are coughing and working hard to breathe, ones who can't eat well, who need um, different forms of oxygen to help them breathe and then the breathing tube and ventilators when it gets the worst. It's a really tough virus. ABC News going inside Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas, as nurses and doctors deal with a surge in viruses. What worries me is the fact that we're seeing flu increase. That's my biggest worry right now. We have a lot of kids admitted right now with RSV. That's our concern is what does that look like? two weeks down, a week down the road. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the experts here are saying, plus the symptoms every parent needs to look out for. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Annali, ABC News, New York. A quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over there at Highway 90 at Couples, also Highway 281 at Hildebrand. Mark's saying that there is a exit closed around Bamsey due to construction. Yes, on Transkai this morning says that the exit uh, to Bamsey is closed due to construction. Use an alternate route. Waiting for the rain. Yeah, it, it, the line of rain is the line of storms are starting to form up out in the hill country as mm -hmm. of right now. And it does look like the timing is going to be right around the commute. I know it gets started, you know, some folks in the next hour. So mm -hmm. may not be uh, the heavy rain right then, but then proceeding on through the rest of the morning. So Should just be interesting. Yeah, just allow yourself a lot of extra time. I mean, it's going to be wet out there. So and uh, some heavier downpours can be expected in some spots, as well as maybe some stronger storms, some very windy conditions and it's going to be windy all day long as well. So here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And again, this uh, this chunk of storms out there to the west, which is definitely starting to form up and some decent downpours. You can see obviously some pretty hefty downpours with some of these individual cells. Overall, uh, I'm going to show you that outlook, but uh, inch uh, or half an inch, inch of rain kind of is going to be the norm with, uh, you know, depending on where you are, obviously. But again, these storms are are continuing to work their way to the east at a fairly good clip. We're starting to see some lightning strikes as well, and even a couple of heavier downpours right in there. That kind of uh, that purple shade, which is now just entering Uvalde County. A little bit of hail is uh, is possible with some of these storms, as well as some very strong winds, and that's what we're going to have to watch out for as far as the uh, severe potential, which is the the high winds as well as the hail. The one thing to take note of too is there's a lot more activity up to the north of us. That's closer to the, the center of that low, which is uh, kind of the, the culprit for all this, is, which is what is generating this. Here's the uh, rapid update computer model, and this one has the line continuing to develop throughout the rest of the morning. And then, of course, coming through the kind of the metropolitan area and just west of San Antonio by 7 o'clock and then continuing its eastward progress and moving on out of here. Now, some of the, the short range computer models do have this kind of moving through San Antonio fairly quickly. So by about 10 o'clock, much of that would be out of the metropolitan area and then into late morning. And that's when the winds do start to pick up and it's going to be very blustery. Northwesterly wind about 15, 25 miles per hour gusting from there. 
As far as the severe threat, much of the area does have the risk for a couple of isolated, strong to potentially severe storms. Like I said, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. Primarily high winds, it looks like. But then also an isolated tornado cannot be completely ruled out. But I think the better chance, if anything were to pop up, would be further on down here to the southeast where there's a greater risk for something uh, severe. And that would be as we get into kind of the early afternoon hours down there to the southeast. So here's the 12 hour outlook and temperatures are going to be not dropping down all that much from where they are right now. You may get some rain cooled air briefly, but basically we're going to be staying in the mid 60s this morning. Those good rain chances, showers, thunderstorms will continue through the area. Then they start to taper off from west to east, obviously out west sooner this morning, and we are going to make it up through the mid 70s by later on this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine out there and we'll be in the upper 70s. Very blustery conditions as far as what to expect rain wise, uh, half inch to an inch lesser amounts off to the south and west and then greater amounts, especially well up there to the northeast of us with some very heavy rain. That's where the center of this low is. It's that spin right there, which is going to kind of come down in our direction and then work its way off to the uh, the northeast. So just uh, grab a raincoat and allow yourself some extra time unless you're going to leave like right now to get an early jump and, and before the rain ever hits. 73 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, very windy. So again, there's no rain in that graphic at all. That will all be off to the east in some of our eastern counties, but we'll start to clear out very quickly. And then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine. It's 78 for a high temperature, very windy conditions. Football tonight, it's going to be a nice night. Take a jacket, but it is going to definitely be breezy. Now the weekend, We'll have, I think, more sunshine, a lot of clouds starting off tomorrow, but the sunshine in the afternoon and then we'll have uh, some more clouds, especially later on Sunday and windy again tomorrow. Then we get into Monday. Good trick or treat and weather, still low humidity. Another chance of rain on Tuesday. So watch out for the rain this morning. And what we plan to do too, even after GMSA is over, download the app. So Justin and I, Mia Montgomery is going to be in here as well, and we'll be on the uh, the weather app there, tracking all the rain. That'll be okay. after seven o'clock this morning. Okay, gonna be a busy morning. Very yeah. busy yeah. day. Earning that paycheck today, 452, 66 degrees. And we are getting closer to going back to Wakanda. Up next, Black Panther 2's director talks about what fans can expect when the film hits theaters next month. Just about five till five, White Lotus returns to HBO and it's almost time to return to Wakanda. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You're gonna die. They're gonna have to drag you out of here. After winning 10 Emmys last month, The White Lotus returns to HBO Sunday night, season two of the dark satirical drama featuring an almost all new cast. And that's not the only change. The setting moves from the breathtaking shores of Maui to the equally beautiful Sicilian seaside. Aubrey Plaza, one of the new actors, telling me filming in the shadow of Mount Etna affected everything. Yeah, I mean, there's an energy to the volcano. You know, you can taste it in the wine, literally. You can taste the wine in Sicily, tastes like volcanic ash. And it's an acquired taste, and I've come to really love it. I didn't like it at first. Season two of The White Lotus debuts Sunday night on HBO. We're getting closer to going back to Wakanda. Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, had its world premiere this week in Hollywood. Director Ryan Coogler talked to ABC News about what to expect. I think fans can expect um, a, a big, exciting movie that has that has every emotion you could you could ask for in it. Um, it it's it's uh, but it's really a celebration. You know, it's a celebration of life, a celebration of Wakanda, a celebration of new cultures that we explore in the film. And it's a celebration of star Chadwick Boseman, who died two years ago of colon cancer. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is in theaters November 11th. Yes, Salem, we're back! Hocus Pocus 2 with a magical premiere, Nielsen said it had the most watched debut for a streaming movie ever since it started keeping track. 2.7 billion minutes viewed in the first week on Disney Plus after its September 30th premiere. Disney Plus's Encanto was the previous champ with 2.2 billion minutes. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. And happy birthday today to Julia Roberts. The Ticket to Paradise star is 55, while House of the Dragon star Matt Smith turns 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. Now about three minutes till five and it's 66 degrees. The latest government report shows the U.S. economy rebounded strongly in the third quarter. Why worries about a possible recession still exist for some economists. Plus hear from the mother of a 13 year old who had to escape a house fire by climbing onto the roof to wait for firefighters. 
And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide looking over at Loop 410 at Broadway where things are moving at this hour, but we expect things to get busy and our Stephen Cavazos is in the studio to give us an update. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Line of showers and thunderstorms is continuing to develop to develop out to the west. If you want to uh, kind of avoid the rain, leave earlier than later. How much rain can we expect and what's in store for the weekend that's coming up? And we're going to hear more from the mother of a local girl who escaped onto her home's roof during a fire. An update on what the family lost. The U.S. economy is showing signs of strength and resilience. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Why there are still economic headwinds ahead. And outside with live cam, the weekend is almost here. We're waiting on the bad weather to move through, and then we know that's going to affect your morning commute. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio, and we'll be checking in with him throughout the morning and, of course, throughout uh, Good Morning America as well. But GMSA, let's go to our first full hour. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, October 28th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a great week. And now it's time for that rain to come in. Let's get an update. Uh, Mike, you know what's happening right now? Well, we do have some wet roads out there. We did have in and around town. We did have uh, some showers late last night, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms. But the, the heavier rain is going to move in later on. Right now, 66 degrees. Notice how that bottom number, dew point, has gone up to 60. So there is more humidity out there. That's all going to be changing later on today. We will make it up to 78 and it's going to be almost two different days. We've got uh, mild humid conditions this morning and we'll have some of the rain that's going to be moving on through here and then it's going to be a gorgeous afternoon, although very, very windy today. The aquifer yesterday did drop down one tenth of a foot and as far as the allergens are concerned, we do have mold on the low side. Now we do have the threat for a couple of strong to potentially severe storms out there as this line of storms does work its way on through the area. High winds and hail are going to be the uh, the biggest things we're going to have to worry about and an isolated tornado cannot be completely ruled out. The greater this will just be sort of be isolated. I think the thing we're really going to have to deal with this morning is just the fact that it's going to be a wet morning and some potentially heavier downpours. There is a slightly better chance in some of our eastern counties and then down there along the coastal plain as far as a, a the severe threat because the storm is going to be hitting there in the later morning hours and then in the early afternoon hours. Here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And there's this line of storms again. There was nothing out there just about an hour and a half ago, but these things are definitely starting to uh, develop and working their way on through Uvalde County. Concan, you're about to see some of these uh, storms as well as right here in uh, Uvalde. They will continue to work their way to the east. And some of the, uh, now as you can see, the little purple that popped up right there and then sort of died down. So we are seeing some decent downpours with some of these showers and storms. But the one thing to, to keep in mind is the fact that a lot of the uh, more widespread and heavier rain is up to the north. And this is where the heaviest rain is going to be well to the north of our area. Although we still may see a half an inch to an inch. And then, of course, some heavier downpours with some of those thunderstorms, individual cells, mid 60s all around the area this morning. So we will have showers and storms, some potentially severe and then becoming windy. It looks like the wind's going to be shifting around about 10 o'clock this morning when the front actually moves through here in town, and that's going to continue to push all the rain off to the east, mostly sunny then later on this afternoon. Windy, upper 70s. Nice looking fall afternoon. It's going to be mostly clear tonight. Coolish. Going to a game tonight, take a jacket, and once again, it will be windy tonight as well as tomorrow. Then, good looking weekend. We'll have more clouds later on Sunday as well as cloudier skies on Monday, but very, very pleasant temperatures then through the weekend and into high. Uh, Halloween. More on the uh, potential for heavy rain around here coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, pretty good right now, right? Right now, Mike, and uh, you mentioned this earlier. You know what? If you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, it's not a bad time to leave. Uh, let's get a quick look at your commute. Thankfully, no issues that we're locating here on these trans guide cameras, but I did notice that our friends over there are moving the camera around in some of these shots. But before we get to that, we want to show you what's taking place in and around the Alamo City. 281 right by the airport looks pretty quiet there in US 98 couples. You know, you notice that we start to see a lot more activity out there as people are making their way into the Alamo City, but other places like 281 at Hildebrand 
spread. It's pretty quiet. So again, a really good time to head out, get the morning started. We are, of course, going to have to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning uh, due to that rain. But the commute right now is pretty quiet. We take you to the map and nothing to show you there. Pretty green, as you can see, a lot of road closures that you can expect into the weekend. And we'll have more on that a little bit later on today. But right now, those travel times into the Alamo City, you are in luck. I-10, if you're traveling in the westbound lanes, it's about half an hour, so still pretty green from Seguin. A little more than half an hour on 87 if you're traveling northbound. Coming in from La Verdea, 33 minutes is what you can expect. Friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes to the Alamo City at this point. So, yes, the roads are quiet right now, but you can see in some of these shots uh, right now, you have to take advantage of these, uh, these empty roadways if you can. But we're going to watch roads closely, get you through the morning and into the weekend. Guys. Stephen, thank you, Natalie. Breaking news, four members of a local family have been rushed to a hospital, all of them with stab wounds. Two of them are children. San Antonio police are still actively investigating this case. It's happening in the 500 block of Burleson near Hackberry Street. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, do police know who did this? Well, they do have a suspect. They say one of the four people who are in the hospital is their suspect. They say uh, it includes a man, a woman, and two children, ages four and five years old. And they believe the man is the one responsible for all of this. Now, they found three of those victims, or the three victims, rather, inside an apartment here in the 500 block of Burleson. You can see uh, police still standing outside. They're waiting for a search warrant to go in and search that home. Uh, according to a neighbor, the man was found outside near a garbage dumpster. She says she heard a gunshot, then heard someone scream and saw the man out here bleeding uh, on the sidewalk. Later on, she did see police and paramedics come here and then rush the children out of there into an ambulance. The police tell us that one of those children is in critical condition. They believe the five-year-old, that includes a boy and a girl, but they weren't able to tell me which was the four-year-old and which was the five-year-old. They're, they're not sure exactly what led up to this, but they are describing this as family violence. And again, they are waiting to go into that home and search it and uh, see if they can recover any other evidence. They did tell us they found some evidence out here outside, but they are going to do a thorough ser search of this house as soon as they get the warrant. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A family frustrated over delayed justice in sending a message to the Bear County District Attorney's Office through a billboard along I-10 near downtown. So it shows the picture of Gabriel Gallegos and the number of days it has been since he was killed. It says 885 and still no justice, no trial. Gallegos was killed in a wrong way driver crash back in May of 2020. Mariana Campos Jimenez was charged with intoxication manslaughter and is that on bond? The Houston family says the billboard is not a political statement. They were just frustrated with excuses and want swifter action. My hope is that the cases get the attention they deserve. That they're not just another case number. They're not a folder in a, in a stack. That individuals who have been victimized, families um, who are going through it, they get 110% and they have the DA's office best efforts. Now the district attorney's office issued a statement saying the delays families have experienced are due to COVID. It says that Gallegos' case has been a priority and is complicated, but they will be ready for trial. This morning we're hearing from the mother of a 13 year old girl who managed to escape a local house fire by climbing on the roof. She says the first moment she came home, her daughter being rescued, she had no idea the home was even on fire. Happened Wednesday night in southwest San Antonio in the 7100 block of Comet Manor. She and her other children had just returned from an event when they learned Cruz had been battling the blaze for an hour. Apparently she had woke up, heard the smoke detectors going off, and she was going to go out her bedroom door, but it was too smoky. so. She went out the window and they were able to get her off the roof and they examined her and she was completely fine. Families not only lost necessities like food, clothing and toiletries, they also lost their beloved pet cat. And turning now to elections, today is the last day to register for a mail ballot. Thousands of voters have already made it to the polls in Bear County. After yesterday's numbers, it brings our total to more than 125,000 ballots cast so far. Early voting runs through November 4th. Election day is November 8th. 
New government data shows the U.S. economy rebounded after two quarters of declines. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, the third quarter GDP report is welcome news for President Biden as he faces criticism over his handling of the economy. Amid recession fears and stubbornly high inflation, a show of strength and resilience in the U.S. economy. New government data finds gross domestic product grew at a 2.6% annual rate in the third quarter after shrinking for the first six months of the year. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling CNN she sees no signs of a recession, pointing to strong consumer spending and record low unemployment. We have unemployment at a 50 year low. There are two job vacancies for every um, American who's looking for work. With his economic approval ratings underwater, just 11 days to go until the midterms, President Biden touting the positive news and pointing to a recent drop in gas prices. AAA reports the national average for a gallon of gas is now sitting near $3.76. That's down eight cents from a week ago, but still higher than this time last year. The price of gasoline's falling, and I'm gonna keep pushing until I get it down. But there are still clouds of economic uncertainty on the horizon. The Federal Reserve is set to raise interest rates again next week as part of its aggressive campaign to tame inflation. Those rate hikes rippling across the economy, sending mortgage rates to the highest level in 20 years. For a lot of families, things are still tough. Now, economists continue to debate the likelihood of a recession next year, but some companies are sounding the alarm. In its earnings on Thursday, Amazon warned of a weaker than expected holiday shopping season, pointing to higher inflation hitting consumers. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 511 and 66 degrees for now. Glad you're with us. YouTube trying to make accurate health information more accessible. We'll tell you about their new partnership with doctors and nurses. And taking a look with live cam out there, 66 degrees for now. We're waiting on the real rain, if you will. We had some showers overnight, but expecting kind of a huge mess this morning. We'll be right back. In today's Tech Bites, YouTube is now allowing health professionals to apply for verified labels. Licensed doctors, nurses, therapists, and social workers will be certified in an effort to fight misinformation and make accurate health data more accessible. The accounts will provide information panels and suggestions for related content. Tesla's CyberQuad ATV for Kids is being recalled after the government said it doesn't meet safety standards. About 5,000 are affected. Tesla's partner Radio Flyer is handling the recall. Finally, Lego is discontinuing its Mindstorms robot line. It launched back in 1998 and featured larger, more mechanical components than traditional Lego sets. Lego will continue supporting the app where the robots can be controlled and programmed for another two years. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. Now 515 on your Friday morning. Let's take a look at the roads, the trans guide really quick. Looking at I-35 at Maine, where things are moving. And haven't seen a whole lot of problems yet, but we do have Stephen Cavazos here to track things this morning. We'll be right back. You got 100 points. Have you been moisturizing? Just sunscreen. That's 50 points. With AARP rewards, anyone can earn points. Who's got 200 points? You've got 200 points. It's the free loyalty program that rewards you. They're ready for you. That's 300 points. And helps your money, health, and happiness live longer. I beat times. 200 points. Start earning and redeeming points today. With New Chapter Multivitamin Gummies, you get so much more than just mm. more nutrients, more research, and more organic ingredients. You also get less sugar, and that means less candy posing as vitamins. New Chapter. That's wellness well done. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Time check is a 518. We are keeping our close eye on the roadways right now. Uh, notice this shot is moving around. Our friends at Transguide are trying to get this shot of some flashing lights out there. Nothing's been reported just yet, but we are seeing those flashing lights uh, here somewhere along the roadway. So sometimes this does take a little time as they maneuver the camera. Of course, we're going to be keeping you updated throughout the morning on the commute. But right now, I would say for the most part, it is quiet. But let's get you to the map because there is nothing to show you out there, at least at this point. Uh, you can see a lot of green on the screen 
screen, but of course still some active road closures that you need to be on the lookout for and today, especially with some rain expected a little bit later on. But let's tell you what's going to be taking place here. FM 1535 and Northwest Military Highway utility work, and that does uh, continue up until Friday, October 28th. That is today, 7 in the morning at 5 in the afternoon. Expect to see single lane closures in both directions there from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. That's near Chavano Park. So just plan your commute ahead of time, especially on a day like today. We're going to be keeping a close eye on the roadways, so grab those phones right now, and you can actually open your camera up and scan that QR code. That will take you directly to our KSAT traffic page. Of course, has a full list of all the closures there, but not only that, our Twitter page will be updated with any incidents you need to be aware of. And Mike, on a day like today, drivers are going to want to make sure they take it slow on the roads. Yeah, we still have some damp roads right now from some of the rain we had last night. You know, when you're talking about uh, apps, the get the weather app because not only can you check out radar yourself, but uh, Justin Horn, who just walked in the uh, the studio here uh, at seven o'clock, we're going to do a, an app cast. We're going to be on the app. So even though Good Morning America is going to be going on, you can still get the very latest on the weather. We're going to be doing that again at uh, at seven o'clock. So here's what's going on on live radar right now. Obviously, the line is developing. The heavier storms are just to the north of our area. There is some uh, hail being reported up there as well and some being detected by radar. And this is where the heaviest rain is going to be further on up to the uh, the north of us. But take a look at this line right here that's working its way through uh, U Valley. A pretty good clip coming on through here. And uh, some of the uh, estimates are as of right now that it's moving at a roughly uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. So at that rate, this is going to continue to work its way to the east and within in the next uh, couple of hours, Canepa, you're going to be about 530 hitting some of this rain. Sabinal at uh, just before about 10 till 6 and then Medina just after 6 o'clock as these storms continue to work their way off to the east again at about 30 to 35 miles per hour. And as far as rainfall rates, it's uh, it's coming down at a fairly good clip in some of these storms uh, earlier this morning. Some of these rainfall rates we're being reported at about um five to six inches per hour. There's that one cell right there, and that one's coming down at, uh, let me get a different little spot right there, but that one is coming in at, uh, let's try this one more time right there, and we'll see what the rainfall rate is looking at. They're just to the south of Uvalde, about five inches per hour. So again, you can see some of these heavier downpours as this continues to work its way off to the east. And that's what we can expect here in town and in sort of the metropolitan area once this moves on through. Now, a couple of short range computer models. This is the one I showed last half hour, and this has everything continuing to work its way to the east and uh, a little bit more widespread with some of the heavier downpours, some of the uh, thunderstorms as we go on through the morning commute. And the other thing to take Take note of too is a lot of the short range computer models have most everything out of the area by 10 to 11 o'clock as the front moves on through. Here's a different short range computer model and this one is maybe not quite as aggressive as far as the widespread coverage of some of these uh, heavier storms, but there will be some potentially heavy storms in here. But the other thing that's in agreement with is a lot of this is going to be through San Antonio and through the area by 10 to 11 o'clock this morning. Now, of course, we do have that risk for some potentially severe storms. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats. An isolated tornado can't be ruled out. But I think the thing we're really going to have to deal with is just the fact it's going to be pretty windy out there. Uh, not necessarily severe winds, but then the, uh, the rain that's going to be coming down which is going to make the commute kind of slow. So that'll be the situation through this morning. Then again, by between 10, 11 o'clock, things start to clear out, obviously clearing out out to the west much sooner. Plenty of sunshine later on today. 78, very windy, 15, 25 mile per hour winds, and it is going to be very blustery. And as far as overall rainfall, heaviest to the north and east, lesser amounts to the southwest. But then again, you've got those those, you know, downpours associated those heavy uh, isolated downpours associated with some of the uh, the thunderstorms. So 73 at noon today, partly cloudy skies again. Nothing as far as any rain in this graphic. There will be some leftover well off to the east and then high temperature today up to 78. Mostly sunny, windy, nice night, windy tonight, cool. Starting off on the coolish side, both tomorrow as well as Sunday, somewhat on Monday as well. Windy again tomorrow, nice in the afternoon, actually only low uh, 70s, low to mid 70s tomorrow and good trick or treating weather. So again, a couple of heavier downpours here. So we'll have to watch out for, you know, as you're on the highway, if you get one of those thunderstorms,
thunderstorms, that kind of blinding rain to uh, to move on in and uh, potentially strong to severe storms this morning. Well, the good news is we're giving folks plenty of notice yeah. to be yes. prepared this morning. Allow yourself a lot of extra time. Yes, and be careful out there. Thank you, Mike. 524, 66 degrees. And coming up next, we're getting some new Beatles music today. Let me tell you how it will be. The Beatles are releasing a massive revolver box set. We're going to tell you about all the songs that are included. A new Beatles release tops today's entertainment news. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in our Hollywood Minute. The Beatles' Revolver, featuring the song Taxman, originally released in 1966. Out today are a series of expanded special editions of the album. The super deluxe version features 63 tracks with stereo, mono, and Dolby Atmos mixes, half-speed mastered vinyl, and a 100-page hardbound book. Welcome to Drink Masters. The bar is open. And Daddy's thirsty. <laughs> Drink Masters pits mixologists against each other in crafting potent potables in a competition for a six-figure prize. I was blown away by them being ovens in there and, <laughs> and you know, d uh, distillation systems and making caviar. I mean, all this stuff goes into making the perfect cocktail. Whether you prefer Bottoms Up, Prost, or Slancha, Drink Masters is now pouring on Netflix. My name is Elmer. My name's Boris. Not as cool, but it goes with my face. <laughs> Award season news, My Father's Dragon has won the special jury prize at the fifth edition of the Animation is Film Festival. Created by Ireland's Cartoon Saloon Studio, My Father's Dragon bows on Netflix November 11th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It's now 528, 66 degrees. Elon Musk already making big changes as a new owner of Twitter. What his plans mean for users going forward? And ahead on GMSA 6, four siblings alive this morning thanks to a man who made a wrong turn. Don't miss the dramatic rescue caught on camera. Line of storms in the hill country is moving to the east at about 30 to 35 miles per hour. Some pretty hefty downpours. That's what we can expect here in town. When will it arrive? Details in just a couple of moments. I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. It's official Elon Musk owns Twitter. We'll tell you about big changes he's already made. And here's a hint, it involves some pricey pink slips. And taking a look outside with live cam, waiting on that heavy rain. But for now, things are calm in this shot, 66 degrees. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is October 28th and all of us here at the desk are keeping an eye on the skies this morning. It could kind of change everything, right, Stephen? Yeah, it can. Yeah. We're keeping our eyes on the road as well. Okay. Very and good. and when you said waiting on the heavy rain, I think yeah. that's the one thing most people are going to be having to deal with are those, you know, those heavy downpours at times moving on through here. Obviously, windy conditions. Yes, there is the chance for a couple of storms to become uh, strong or potentially severe. Uh, just some damp spots on the roads. I saw a little bit this morning coming into work, but yeah. uh, nothing, nothing as of yet. Yeah, as you can see behind us here and uh, show you in a second, there is the line developing out in the hill country. As of right now, we are still at 66 degrees here in town. Dew point stands at 63, so that number has definitely gone up. More humidity out there, more moisture in the atmosphere is helping to feed some of these showers and thunderstorms. 66 is the current temperature, and that's not really going to be moving all that much. Maybe a little bit of uh, some, some rain cooled air, perhaps. And here's the line of showers and thunderstorms, and this extends from just about Crystal City all the way up toward Lakey and then more up there around uh, just to the east of Rock Springs, northeastern Edwards County Junction and then further to the north and it's further to the north where we are seeing more in the way of uh, some heavier downpours, some heavier thunderstorms. Now we will obviously get some of this rain continuing to work its way to the east and like I said this is moving to the east at 30 35 miles per hour. So out there in Uvalde give it to roughly an hour to work its way into San Antonio. Obviously, we'll start to see some of the effects of that a little bit sooner with some of those showers. And yes, there is, like I said, the chance for a couple of strong to potentially severe storms. Storm Prediction Center still has the, the threat for a couple of isolated high winds and some hail. That would be the biggest threats, and I think uh, high winds would be the bigger threat. But then again, you can't 
actually rule out an isolated tornado, although the better chance for anything severe would be further on down to the east, and this is when the, the storms are going to be working their way down along the coastal plain. That will be late morning and into the early afternoon hours when there's a little more heating out there. Mid-60s all the way around the area, thanks to the cloud cover, the higher humidity, very consistent temperatures. Mold is on the low side. We're going to be seeing showers and thunderstorms this morning, and then things clear out very nicely this afternoon. It's going to be very windy, upper 70s. The weekend's looking pretty good. We'll get all the details in just a couple of minutes and analyze some of these storms, see if there's uh, anything, see how much rain is coming down, because it's coming down in buckets in some places. We'll check that out in just a moment. Traffic Authority. Calm before the uh, the storm or yeah. calm before the wet roads. Yeah, so to speak, right, Mike? Uh, but let's get a look there. 10 at Days of Valo. This is a shot that we uh, were trying to get you earlier. Our friends at Transguide are moving that camera around, and sometimes it takes a little while, but we do have flashing lights out in the distance there. I'll actually step out of the way so you can see that. It appears that could be on the frontage road. I've not seen anything reported just yet, but the commute is still uh, early right now, and right we are seeing a little, little few more folks out there. So just remember, take it easy, take it slow. Today is especially because it is going to get a little bit busier as the morning commute does get going. So expect some wet roads a little later on. But let's go ahead and get you to our map and show you exactly what we're seeing here because nothing else is uh, actually causing any delays right now. We've, right, you can take advantage of these quiet roads. Perfect time, maybe. Go grab that cup of coffee, but just remember uh, the commute will pick up a little bit later this morning, so we're giving you that warning ahead of time. But let's get you to those travel times. If you are going to be heading into the Alamo City from any of these communities, thankfully you are still in the green. That journey from Bernie, about 24 minutes at this hour in the eastbound lanes of I-10. It does appear 27 minutes on 281 southbound. If you are traveling in from Bolverde and not too awful from New Braunfels, 35 on uh, 35 southbound, we're looking at 25 minutes. So just remember to take it slow out on the roads. Thankfully, no other issues to report as we get it back here on that rotation. 37, just a few folks out there in 1604 at Pat Booker. Pretty quiet, but 37 at 410 uh, does appear that we have a few more folks out there this morning. But we're going to continue to watch the roads closely and have those updates throughout the morning. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Updating late breaking news. Police are calling it a case of family violence. They found four people, including two children with stab wounds at a home on the city's east side. Katrina Weber is live in the 500 block of Burleson, where the investigation is still going on. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that one of the adults is also the suspect. Have police found out what led up to that? Well, they were not able to offer any details other than to call this a case of family violence or domestic violence. The people who were stabbed include a man, a woman, and two young children, four and five years old. And police say the man appears to be the suspect in this case. The police have been working at, uh, initially they were outside the apartment here, but they have gone inside. They were waiting for a warrant. So they've been searching inside this apartment here in the 500 block of Burleson, uh, where they did find the three victims, the woman and the two children. A neighbor told us that she saw the man outside on the ground next to a garbage dumpster, that she had heard a gunshot prior to that, and then saw the man on the ground bleeding and yelling. And that matches with what a supervisor here told us, that the man was not only stabbed, but also shot. Now, all four people have been taken to a hospital. We were told that one of the children, we don't know which one, uh, was in critical condition. And so police have been here ever since about three this morning, trying to figure out exactly what happened. But again, they do believe that the man in this case is the suspect. Uh, we don't know who else they may be looking at or talking to, but we did see them drive away just a short time ago with a woman in the back seat, presumably as a witness, because police did describe the man as the suspect in this case. Uh, we hope to learn a little bit more once police know more about what happened and exactly what led up to this. But again, a man, woman, and two children all in the hospital with stab wounds, and they believe the man is the suspect. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. 538, a bait and switch. That's how some of the families of Vivaldi victims described yesterday's meeting with the director of the Department of Public Safety. They went to Austin expecting answers regarding the response to the Robb Elementary shooting back on May 24th. Why didn't they go in there? He should have been, should have been terminated within 10 minutes, Right. period, plain and simple. What were they afraid of, sir? Uh, you know, everyone is, like I said, everyone's being evaluated. DPS Director Steve McGraw said he could not provide much information at the request of the Uvalde County District Attorney Christina Mitchell. McGraw said the criminal investigation would wrap up by the end of the year.
Well, Elon Musk is the new owner of Twitter. CNN's Amy Kiley has more on the purchase and what it could mean for users. I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. It's official. Elon Musk now owns Twitter. And he's already fired three top executives. That's according to two sources familiar with the decision. So what does that mean for users? The answer could start with money. Musk is playing a pretty hefty price. About $44 billion to be precise. The owner of Tesla and SpaceX completed the purchase last night. Twitter has challenges as a growth platform. That's why there's no second bidder. Before the final deal, analyst Dan Ives speculated on how Musk could earn back his money. He says Twitter might leverage advertising and could become a subscription service. Users also might notice this difference. We want to be just very reluctant to delete things, just be very cautious with permanent bans. Timeouts, I think, are better. Musk tweeted a statement saying he still plans to impose consequences on people who misuse the platform, but it's not clear what that means. When he says he believes in free speech, does he take care of that? Does he get rid of the N-word that I'm often called? When it comes to Twitter bans, some wonder about one user in particular. Will Donald Trump come back? That remains to be seen. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Millions of people have already cast their ballots ahead of the 2022 midterms. And according to Edison Research and Catalyst, more than 13.8 million people have voted in 44 states. In Florida, nearly 2 million people cast pre-election day ballots. Early voting began this week in some counties, and the rest of the state is required to start by Saturday. Texas, California, and Georgia have all seen more than 1 million ballots cast. School in Los Angeles got locked down to to a mountain lion's unexpected visit. Animal control were called in after the animal was spotted yesterday. The cougar uh, hit among some trees in the alleyway. It bolted for the street when officials showed up. Officials say they captured and tranquilized it. The mountain lion was taken to the Angeles National Forest to be released back into the wild. But I understand it's been offered a show on Bravo starting this fall. <laughs> He's doing very well. That's a joke. I'm just know. making sure you're awake. 541, 66 degrees. And good news if you're planning to go on a cruise, we're going to tell you about which cruise lines are dropping their COVID restrictions for passengers. Outside with live cam, what is no laughing matter is the seriousness of the weather situation that is approaching our area in the next couple of hours. Mike will have more on those storms. He's tracking them and how it can impact your morning commute with Stephen Cavazos. And welcome back. It's 544 in your morning consumer headlines. The San Antonio area bakery recalling thousands of its pie products. So check your freezer for the boomerang frozen beef shepherd's pie. Pies baked at the Lone Star Bakery in China Grove are under recall. They have a use date by September 23rd of next year. Now investigators say the pies could have pieces of copper wire inside. You can return them to the store for a refund. More cruise lines are dropping COVID rules on Carnival. You won't need proof of vaccination or testing as long as your trip is 15 nights or less. The move comes about a month after Carnival Cruise Lines began relaxing COVID requirements. The line is, however, still encouraging travelers to test for COVID three days before their trip. Princess Cruises made a similar change last week, lifting its remaining vaccine and testing requirements for a number of its voyages. Time now, 545 and 66 degrees for now. So far, so good, but things could go sideways in the next couple of hours as far as the weather and our morning commute. We are all anticipating that, and we're going to have team coverage all morning right here on KSAT 12. Monday. Time check 548. Let's get a look here at the roadways 410 at Fredericksburg on this Friday morning. We are taking a look at those flashing lights. Texas hero truck out there working to assist a driver. Now this hasn't been listed as a stall vehicle or a crash, but notice those road flares that are out there this early in the morning. It does appear that could be off in the far right lane. So just make sure that you watch out if you're traveling down 410 and make sure you check your vehicles as well before you head out on the roadways. Make sure those windshield wipers are working uh, properly, but let's get you to the map. Uh, although we are anticipating 
anticipating a busier commute, a wet commute as the morning does get rolling. Thankfully, right now we're not seeing any delays, uh, not a lot of activity out on the roadways either. So I would say it's a good time to head out and take advantage of the empty roadways. Leave early if you can. Let's get you to the map. Uh, and let's get you to our some uh, uh, part of me, some construction that's going to be taking place here. Also, just to be aware of tonight, barrier work will continue along I 10 over on the east side of Bear County. Uh, it should be wrapping on Friday tonight, uh, nine in the evening at five in the morning. Expect to see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there at FM 1518. But you know where to find that information, ksat.com slash traffic. But let's get you back here on that rotation 281 right by the airport. No delays just yet, but the commute is getting going. Mike Osterhage. Yeah, and uh, if you want to, we've been kind of saying all, all morning long, leave sooner than later. There's the line of showers and thunderstorms that is continuing to work its way to the east and it's coming at a fairly decent clip. It's moving roughly uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. So again, at this rate, this line of storms, kind of the leading edge of the, the heavier rain and moving to the east at uh, roughly, we'll call it 32 miles per hour. It's going to be in Hondo at uh, 639 and right around Sabinal just about in the next uh, say 10 minutes or so and there's almost a little bit of a kind of northeasterly flavor to the uh, the movement of some of these showers and storms now further up to the north and uh, this is where things are now we do have some pretty decent downpours with some of these but just wanted to point out that further to the north that cell is one that's kind of raising some eyebrows as of right now because there is uh, there's some indications that there wants to be in the upper levels of the atmosphere mid levels a little bit of rotation and it's this spot right there in Lano County that uh, Weather Service is kind of keeping an eye on. They've been on the uh, the chat on the website with them, but uh, that's not in our viewing area as of right now, so we don't have to worry about that. We do have the risk for some of these storms to become uh, severe, but the, I think the majority of that would be further to the, that's where the heaviest rain is going to be as well, further up to the north. But obviously, we are going to be seeing some of this uh, heavier rain as this continues roughly 30, 35 miles per hour to the east. So right now, we're just about 6 o'clock. This is going to be hitting during the kind of the heart of the morning commute. That's why we've been saying all along that uh, leave sooner than later. So here's the uh, rapid update computer model. And again, this has this continuing to work its way to the east through the rest of the morning commute coming into town. We will see some heavy downpours around here, uh, some windy conditions as well, and maybe a little bit of small hail. There's been reports of hail further up to the north, again, out of our viewing area with that one cell up there in Llano County. But this is what we're going to be dealing with like I said, through the heart of the morning commute. The one thing, though, it looks like things are wanting to speed up a little bit more looking at some of the the short range computer models that by 10 o'clock, a lot of this is going to be out of, say, downtown San Antonio and continuing to work its way off to the east. And then the winds will definitely pick up in behind that by late morning. And we'll have a lot more sunshine then off to the western portions of the hill country. Yes, we do have the severe threat with high winds and hail being the I think the biggest threats high winds I'd put almost at the top of that list and then an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. Like I said, there's that one cell up there in Lano County that's a little suspect as of right now, but down to the southeast would be a bigger threat for anything or a slightly bigger threat for anything severe. I think what we're really going to have to deal with, though, is just the fact it's going to be coming down pretty hard and pretty heavy at times. And so that's going to create the, the slowdowns on the road, the ponding on the roads, a little bit of uh, in low lying areas, perhaps some flooding because some of the rainfall rates have been about four or five inches per hour. Doesn't mean we get that much, but that's coming down kind of in buckets. And that's what we'll be dealing with in the morning commute 73 at noon. Most everything's going to be out of here. We'll still have some leftover rain in some of our extreme eastern counties by uh, noon. But yeah, things are going to start to clear out. But it will be very windy, though. And then later on this afternoon, a high temperature of 78 degrees, mostly sunny skies, definitely windy out there. Good looking night for football tonight, but wind is definitely going to be a factor and take a jacket. We will bottom out at 52 tomorrow morning, 53 Sunday morning, kind of on the Cool side compared to normal at 74 tomorrow, 77 on Sunday. Really nice kind of fallish weekend. Believe it or not, last weekend of October already. And then Halloween, good trick or treating weather. Still some low humidity. Humidity comes back in here Tuesday, a chance for some rain and right around 80 by the middle part of next week. So still looks like the timing is going to be right around commute time in the heart of the commute. All right, well, we'll be careful yeah. for now. Thank you, Mike.
Right now, 553, 66 degrees. Here are your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 9, 7, 8, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 8, 5, 0, 1, Fireball 9. Cash 5 numbers, 7, 8, 14, 25, 27, Texas 2-step, 5, 11, 16, 18, bonus ball 35. Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of GMA, we'll have the latest on Elon Musk officially taking control of Twitter and already making moves. Plus, Diane Sawyer is back with more of her exclusive interview with Matthew Perry on his hard-fought addiction battle and the friends who reached out. We're also celebrating homecoming at Florida A&M University. We're going to show you how the FAMU family does it right. That and so much more on GMA. We have a lot more coming your way right here in the next hour at GMSA, including a closer look at all those butterflies you might be seeing in your backyard. Why Sarah Costa says they are making a comeback. Four siblings alive today thanks to a man who made a wrong turn. Don't miss this dramatic rescue that was caught on camera. Transguide right now, storms on the way. They are knocking on the door of Bear County, and it will affect the morning commute. Mike and Stephen on top of all of it. And we have much more from them coming up right here on GMSA. It's about to be a busy morning around here in San Antonio. Team coverage still to come. Line of showers and thunderstorms is just moving into Medina County. We do have some severe storms, just a severe thunderstorm warning just issued north of our area. What to expect here in town? Also this morning on GMSA, a house fire here in San Antonio kills several pets overnight. What investigators are saying this morning about a cause. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We made it to Friday, October 28th, Halloween weekend. That's right. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. But before we get to the beautiful weekend, we're going to deal with some rain first. You see radar behind us here. And as we mentioned uh, before we went to commercial break, these storms are just about to get closer to Bear County. Yes, indeed. And as I was talking about how the uh, the storms now is obviously nothing out there. There may be some wet spots on the roads from what uh, we had last night, but these are moving along at a fairly good clip. And this line of rain rain down here right around uh, Uvalde County is just now working its way into Medina County. So despite the fact that there are some pretty heavy rainfall rates, four or five close to six inches per hour, it's not just sitting in one spot. So yes, you're going to have some hefty downpours, but had it been sitting in one spot, it would be, you know, more of a potential for uh, any flooding. Now, as far as the uh, severe weather I was talking about right here around Llano County, just the uh, weather service just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for that cell right there. High winds, some hail and there is the possibility right in here of a, a small tornado, or at least some rotation in the atmosphere. So that's why that severe thunderstorm warning was issued north of our area. This is all, as you can see, working its way to the east to almost a little bit of a northeastward uh, flavor to it. But the uh, showers and storms down here in Uvalde County will continue to work their way to the east at 30 to 35 miles per hour. And we're still looking at 7 o'clock here in town as that line of rain moving on through. There is the chance for some of those storms to be strong to, again, potentially severe. We do have the uh, Storm Prediction Center has one or two isolated ones. Obviously, that is uh, justified up there in Llano County. High winds, hail would be the biggest threats, but like I said, there is the small chance for a small isolated tornado, but most of that would then be off to the east and southeast as those storms work their way to the east later on late morning and in the early afternoon hours mid 60s right now grab a jacket however because you're going to need it for the rain this morning and then later on this afternoon and this evening because it's going to cool down fairly quickly molds on the low side and uh, temperatures this morning really won't be moving all that much we'll have showers and thunderstorms around here the wind will start to shift around out of the northwest 10 o'clock looks like when most everything's going to be on out of here. It's going to be very blustery uh, this afternoon with those northwesterly winds and we'll continue to clear out from there. 73 at noon and then we are going to have a high temperature today up to the upper 70s and a good looking night for football. We'll talk about the weekend, which looks fantastic, but got to talk about that rain. First of all, more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. So far, so good on the roads. Traffic authority, Stephen, but again, yep. when the heart of the morning commute hits, it's going to be bad timing, right? This 
couldn't have uh, come at a worse time, right, Mike? I mean, we know a lot of people are going to be out there for their Friday morning commute, and we're seeing uh, more vehicles out there now that we've entered that 6 a.m. hour. Check out 35 at Eisenhower. A few more folks coming at us. Thankfully, 10 at Days of Vala doesn't look too bad right now, but we've been saying this. We said it yesterday, and we've said it this morning. If you can, leave early. Those roads aren't too bad right now, but you can see it's getting busier minute by minute. Uh, we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning, but thankfully, nothing major is reported just yet. We take you right to our map and of course we're going to have those active road closures that will keep you posted about but uh, notice there's no delays uh, here on our map no orange or red that is picking up lots of green out there so again if you can try and leave early let's go ahead and get you to those travel times because if your destination is the alamo city there are not going to be any delays for any of these drivers coming in from pleasanton on 37 northbound it's pleasant 28 minutes is what you can expect highway 90 looks like the usual drive time about 30 minutes in those eastbound lanes if you're coming in from castroville that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes, usual time on 35 northbound. So I would say the roads are quiet and calm right now, but we are going to have to keep a very close eye on things as Mike has his eye on the sky. We're keeping our eyes on the road, so just make sure you do the same. Mark Seth. Much more on weather and traffic coming up throughout the morning. Let's move on to headlines. A woman and two children in the hospital after being stabbed in their home. And San Antonio police believe a man is to blame. That man also is in the hospital with stab wounds. That's right. Katrina Weber is live in the five at a block of Burleson near Hackberry, where police are still investigating. And Katrina, what have they found so far? Well, police uh, did tell us they found some evidence, but they're keeping the details pretty close to the vest at this point. And we did just talk to a sergeant just a few minutes ago, and he gave us an update, a little bit of uh, an explainer of what they're doing here. They are investigating. Well, we understand that they're actually looking at two apartments as part of their investigation. They're side-by-side -side apartments. Uh, you can see some of the investigators still out here right now. He would not elaborate on why they're looking at both apartments, but uh, we understand that the three victims, the woman and the two children, are part of the same family. They were found in one of those homes. We're not sure which one. And then the man was found outside. Now, police did say that those three people who were stabbed, the woman and the two children, are part of the same family. The children are four and five years old. The man, uh, they say, somehow is related. Now, he also was stabbed but shot as well. The sergeant confirming that once again that the man was stabbed and shot. A neighbor did tell us she heard gunshot wounds, saw the man out here on the ground, and then uh, she did uh, say that he was bleeding and he was out here yelling. Um, let me give you a look at the video because this started about three o'clock this morning. That's when police got the call about uh, the stabbings and again found those three victims, the woman and the two children inside a home. Again, the man outside with stab wounds and gunshot wounds. And again, they're still trying to sort all of this out. They said this is a case of family violence, but they have not offered any explanation for what led up to this violence. Uh, but they have been here. And again, now we've confirmed that they are searching two different houses as part of this investigation. And so we hope that we will get some more information and be able to make sense of all of this and figure out exactly what happened. Reporting on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a house fire near Clark High School took the lives of five cats and a dog last night. Happened around 9.30 near I-10 and De Zavala on the northwest side. When firefighters got there, flames were already shooting through the roof. They had to knock, uh, they had the fire rather knocked down within three minutes, but it flared back up. SAFD says the home is a total loss. There were no injuries, but one cat out of six and a dog was able to make it out alive. Arson investigators say it appears to be accidental, but they are still investigating. This morning, we are hearing from the mother of a 13-year-old girl who managed to escape a house fire by climbing on the roof. Now, she says when she came home to her daughter being rescued, she had no idea the house was on fire. It happened on Wednesday night in the 7100 block of Comet Manor. She and her other children had just gotten back from an event when they learned crews had been battling that fire for an hour. She is grateful her daughter, who was the only one home at the time, is safe. Apparently she had woke up, heard the smoke detectors going off, and she was going to go out her bedroom door, but it was too smoky. So she went out the window and they were able to get her off the roof and they examined her and she was completely fine. The family not only lost necessities like food, clothing and toiletries, they also lost their pet cat. 
And looking ahead now, Marcos Fest will be this weekend at Hemisphere. This free event will have live music, art, vendors, special events for kids and families, and around 80 altars created to honor those who have passed away. If you can't make it out, you can watch our primetime special, which airs Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and the KSAT Plus app. Scan this QR code for more information right there. Time is uh, 608, 66 degrees. And still to come on GMSA at 6, TikTok is being blamed for a car wreck that killed four teenagers. Our police say theft was also involved. Plus... <laughs> There is an eerie chill in the air here on GMSA. After the break, we're wrapping up our spooky series as we head into Halloween weekend. Well, that's creepy. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. Uh, still waiting on the heavy downpours. 66 degrees for now. Mike and Steven will be keeping you updated. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 612. So this morning we are wrapping up our haunted series and our crew is checking out a haunt they have never been through before. Here's a look at what they found at Haunted Oaks at Rolling Oaks Mall. So we're back out here again. We're this time we're at Rolling Oaks Mall. We're about to go have a haunted adventure. We're not quite sure what to expect. I brought a friend with me this time. Emily, what do you think? I'm already a little nervous, but we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Never. Come on, Joy, we got this. I don't know. This oh, is yeah. a, we're going in another dark tunnel of doom. this crazy Haunted Oaks experience. We survived. Barely. It was crazy. <laughs> it was very, very intense. I think the mirrors are really what were the scariest part to me. There's, there's some mirrors throughout it. But... I'm shook right now. I feel like I say that all the time, but it was pretty crazy. <laughs> All right, so that was, uh, those are executive producers. Joy Presley does the morning show, and Emily Allen, who does the night beat at 10 out there, getting the bejesus scared out of them. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for doing this for us. Also, coming up on GMSA at 9, we're going to hear from some of the scare actors at Haunted Oaks. Well, back to business, and that begins with traffic. Uh, right now, it is 614. Stephen, what's up? Well, not looking too scary out here, thankfully. 410 at Broadway. The roads are still quiet as we are inching closer and closer to that time that we know it's going to be pretty busy and, of course, wet out there. But let's get a look around town. 410 at Gulebra, you can see that traffic's already getting moving there. Got a lot more folks out there, actually. 281 at San Pedro within the last few minutes. Looks like everyone may have decided to take our warning. Head out if early if you can. But as we take a look at the airport, traffic is getting moving. Thankfully, we're not seeing any flashing lights from these transguide cameras. But let's go ahead and get Get you to the map and what we are just seeing are some quiet roadways and it's reflected right there. Lots of green on the screen and of course those road closures and I just want to remind you uh, make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. Although we are expecting some rainfall, we want to make sure you know what else to expect out there. Road closures here along 5th FM 1535 in Northwest Military Highway. Utility work has been ongoing and this is going to start during a pretty busy time around 7 in the morning should wrap around 6 in the evening, so it will take place all day long. Make sure you plan ahead single lane closures in both directions right there from loop 1604 to Hebner Road, but that work should end today. Now go ahead and open your phones if you're still at home. Grab your camera app and uh, open it up. Scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and it not only has a full list of closures there, but of course any incidents that do pop up on our roadways will be sure to keep you notified. So just plan your commute ahead of time, Mike. 
Good idea. Thank you very much, sir, because it's still looking like all this rain is going to be hitting right around the heart of the uh, the morning commute. There is still the uh, severe thunderstorm warning in effect up here in Llano County. There was some hail, some uh, 60 mile per hour winds, one inch diameter hail. There had been a little bit of uh, some rotation in the atmosphere, but that has sort of uh, settled down. All right, a little bit uh, closer into our area, and you can see the line of showers and thunderstorms goes from Fredericksburg in through Kerrville, and now just about uh, Hondo, you're starting to see a little bit of this light rain, and this continues to work its way to the east. Lightning strikes, uh, not a lot, but one thing it does look like, and I want to put this in motion once again real quickly, and you see how it's sort of uh, broken out, broken up a little bit. There's not as much red back out there, say, an hour ago, an hour or two ago, but it does appear as though maybe the intensity of the, the rainfall is starting to build a bit more. As far as the timing of this. Let's go with the uh, right there. Some of the heavier rain and that line right there again is working its way to the east at 30 to 35 miles per hour. So at this rate, it is going to be working into Hondo right around 622 as it is starting to just about get there with some of the, the lighter rain. Uh, Divine High School 646 and then Medina Valley High School right around uh, 656 Lytle at seven o'clock this morning. So as it continues on, this is as we're getting into the metropolitan area as we approach seven o'clock, kind of the, the heart of the, uh, the morning commute. That's what we are going to be uh, looking at there. Now, as far as rainfall amounts, so this is the 12 hour estimate as far as how much rain has fallen. There have been a couple of heavier downpours here and there, and especially down around southern Uvalde County, northern Zavala County. There have been some estimates here, half an inch of rain, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Let me switch over to uh, the other radar over there in toward uh, Del Rio, and this is going to show us and it's picked up the rain a little bit better here where we've had some of these heavier amounts where it's been almost an inch of rain. So half an inch to an inch of rain is probably pretty good as far as uh, a general broad amount. There obviously will be some heavier downpours with some of these uh, the heavier thunderstorms around here because some of the uh, the rainfall rates are still coming down at a fairly decent clip especially right down here in uh, right around northern uh, Frio County, that cell right there, which is working its way to the east, and that's got rainfall rates anywhere from, uh, say, four or five inches per hour. So back to uh, radar, and everything is, again, working its way to the east at roughly uh, about 30, 35 miles per hour. So we will be seeing all of this rain move in here right around the time of the, uh, the heart of the morning commute. All right, as far as severe threat, yep, that still does exist, and that's going to be the case in through the rest of the morning. Here's the uh, rapid update computer model. It's got the rain moving in just about right on schedule as we've been talking about through the heart of the commute and then just as that's ending that's when the rain's going to be moving on out of here and it's going to get very windy Right about 10 o'clock is when it looks like the front and the wind shift is going to take place. Winds will be out of the northwest at about 15, 25 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. Yes, we do still have the severe threat. There is that uh, severe thunderstorm warning up there in Llano County, well out of our area. So we'll just have to be on the lookout. But I think the biggest thing we have to deal with some of those heavy downpours around here right as all the traffic's on all the highways. So, you know, a little bit of ponding, uh, the runoff, the usual that we'll have to be dealing with, a slightly better threat for uh, a couple of those heavier showers and thunderstorms and a stronger or severe storm down to the southeast. And that's going to be late morning, early afternoon. 73 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, windy, and high temperature makes it up to 78, very windy. Good night tonight. It's going to be a great night to be out, but boy, hang on to your hat because it's still going to be very, very windy this evening. One thing to keep in mind for all the uh, football games out there tomorrow. Cool morning 52 actually cool afternoon 74 53 starting off Sunday 77. Nice weekend. Uh, a lot of sunshine, a few clouds here and there. More clouds late Sunday, Monday. Cloudier skies. I think they'll add to the uh, trick or treat weather and uh, pretty good. Another chance of rain on Tuesday. But again, looks like this rain is going to be hitting just when most folks are heading out, so yeah, it's yeah. going to be busy. Uh, if you're thinking, well, where is it? Just be patient. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. Oh, my goodness. You know, you guys will stay on top of it. Yeah. Uh, Stephen as well. 620, 66 degrees. And just ahead, four siblings are alive this morning thanks to a man who took a wrong turn. How that dramatic rescue happened in just moments. Video you got to see. This is how it feels.
to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. Welcome back at 624. A TikTok challenge is being blamed for a car wreck that killed four teenagers in New York earlier this week. Buffalo police say a total of six teens were speeding in a Kia that was reported stolen on Sunday night. All five passengers were ejected from that car. Four of them, ranging in ages 4 to 17 years old, were killed. Now, police say the teens may have been doing a TikTok challenge that encourages people to break into Kia cars using cell phone chargers. Many police departments around the country have reported a rise in Kia and Hyundai theft since the original video was posted. Hey, stop for a minute and take a look at your screen. A raging house fire caught on a doorbell camera also captured a daring rescue of four siblings. A man named Brendan Burt in Omaha says he took a wrong turn down a road and just happened to see this fire. Smoke alarms were not going off, so he took action. Video shows him pounding on windows to wake up. Three kids were home alone with their 22 year old brother. The family was able to make their escape amid the smoke and flames. Their parents who were out of town say they are incredibly grateful for that good Samaritan. Oh my goodness. Time now 625 and 66 degrees for now. There's more ahead before 7 on GMSA, including a closer look at all those butterflies you may be seeing in your yard. Why Sarah Costa says they are making a comeback. Plus. The U.S. economy is showing signs of strength and resilience. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Why there are still economic headwinds ahead. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Things are moving right now at Highway 281 at Loop 410. We'll be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. The line of showers and thunderstorms continues to work its way to the east. Special statement has just been issued for that cell right there in northern Frio County. Very strong winds and heavy downpours will have the latest. Four people, including two children, all found with stab wounds here on the east side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say they're not looking for a suspect. Coming up. Hi, good morning. It is Friday, October 28th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Weather and traffic will be an issue for the next couple of hours. Let's get right to Mike Osterhage. He joins us live here in the studio. Mike, these storms are moving at a pretty good clip. If they were going through a school zone, they'd probably get a ticket. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these things now the latest and this cell that we were talking about right here in uh, Frio County, northern Frio County. This thing is moving along at uh, roughly 50 miles per hour and the Weather Service just issued a, a special state statement about it, how it is obviously going to be affecting portions of Pearsall, Divine, uh, Southern Medina County, Northeastern uh, Frio County, and then work its way into Atascosa and Bear County. It's that cell right there. And some of the rainfall rates associated with that are about uh, six to seven inches per hour. It doesn't mean you'll be getting that much rain, but it is definitely coming down in buckets as this thing works its way off to the east and a pretty good light show. And then we've got more rain right along this line. It's a fairly narrow line, but obviously some pretty hefty downpours. Also further up to the north, and as you can see, the lightning that goes in through Kerr County and then up into Gillespie County. Further up to the north, severe thunderstorm warnings, and there'll be another one posted, but that's further on out of our area. But again, the one we have to keep our eye on for uh, the rest of the morning is that cell that's uh, going to be affecting Divine in just the, a matter of just a few minutes here. And then this line will work its way across the area right in the heart of the, uh, the morning 
commute. And again, computer models do indicate that that this will continue to work its way across here. We are going to be seeing a lot of clearing later on this afternoon. Very, very windy conditions as well, and then setting up for a good looking weekend. More on that coming up, but we're going to be uh, analyzing these storms a lot closer in just the next couple of minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads sooner than later yeah. is what traffic authority Stephen Cavazos has been talking about. Yeah, sooner than later, Mike. Uh, that will be the mantra, at least for right now. Let's get a look around town 37 at 410. Uh, the roads are quiet, and that's really been the trend for the last hour and a half. But we give you a quick look around town 35 at Eisenhower. We have maybe have a few more folks out there in Tana de Zavala. The commute is getting going in both the east and westbound lanes there and 35 north and south looks not too bad. It doesn't look too bad right now, but we are seeing a, the commute pick up and that's good because we want more people to take advantage of these quiet roadways before that weather does get rolling in here. But we give you to the map and there are no issues to talk about as you just saw in those trans guide cameras, just a little bit more traffic. Thankfully, we're not seeing any delays just yet, but uh, of course the roadways are going to be pretty busy in the next few minutes or so, but uh, obviously we're going to keep a close eye on things and you can take it look here at 410 at Broadway. The commute is getting going right now. It's quiet, which is good. Grab that cup of coffee because it's going to get a little messy a little later on. So just prepare for that and remember to drive. So we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are searching two apartments on the east side in connection with a case of family violence. A woman and two children suffered stab wounds. And police say a man was stabbed and shot. Katrina Weber is live in the 500 block of Burleson near Hackberry. Katrina, good morning. Any update on their conditions as far as we know? Well, good morning. Uh, the only information that police have given was about a five-year-old child who was stabbed, and they say that that child was critical. Now, they did update us and say that he had stabilized somewhat, but was still considered in critical condition. Uh, police were searching two apartments. We did get that much out of them. They didn't tell us why two were involved, but just within the last five or ten minutes, they packed up and left from this uh, area. But let me give you a look at the video that we have from earlier as they were here, and as they rushed some of those victims to the hospital. Police say that uh, there were uh, two children, four and five years old, a man and a woman who all were wounded here. Now the man, according to police, had stab and gunshot wounds and the other three were all stabbed. They believe that that man is the suspect in this case, that he is responsible for the stabbings of those three other people. They call this a family violence case and they said that all of those people are related, but they were not able to offer any details on how they're related or exactly what led up to this violence. Uh, they did process two apartments and again, not telling us why two homes were searched in this case, but uh, they did get that information. Get They said they collected some evidence and then they left the scene without giving any further explanation. But we do hope to learn some more details later on about exactly what happened here. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. New this morning, numbers from the government show the U.S. economy rebounded after six months of decline. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, the third quarter GDP report is good news for President Biden as he faces criticism over his handling of the economy. Amid recession fears and stubbornly high inflation, a show of strength and resilience in the U.S. economy. New government data finds gross domestic product grew at a 2.6% annual rate in the third quarter after shrinking for the first six months of the year. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling CNN she sees no signs of a recession, pointing to strong consumer spending and record low unemployment. We have unemployment at a 50-year low. There are two job vacancies for every um, American who is looking for work. With his economic approval ratings underwater, just 11 days to go until the midterms, President Biden touting the positive news and pointing to a recent drop in gas prices. AAA reports the national average for a gallon of gas is now sitting near $3.76. That's down eight cents from a week ago, but still higher than this time last year. The price of gasoline is falling, and I'm going to keep pushing until they get it down. But there are still clouds of economic uncertainty on the horizon. The Federal Reserve is set to raise interest rates again next week as part of its aggressive campaign to tame inflation. Those rate hikes rippling across the economy, sending mortgage rates to the highest level in 20 years. For a lot of families, things are still tough. 
Now, economists continue to debate the likelihood of a recession next year, but some companies are sounding the alarm. In its earnings on Thursday, Amazon warned of a weaker than expected holiday shopping season, pointing to higher inflation hitting consumers. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines, Elon Musk is the new owner of Twitter, and according to sources familiar with that decision. So what it could mean, what could that mean for users? The answer could start with money. Musk bought Twitter for about $44 billion, and one analyst thinks he could leverage advertising or make a Twitter subscription service. Musk has also fired three top executives from the company. Back here at home, thousands of voters have already made it to the polls in Bear County. This morning, our total shows over 125,000 ballots cast so far. Meanwhile, the governor's race continues to be hot. Beto O'Rourke visited with voters here in San Antonio yesterday after Governor Greg Abbott visited the Alamo City on Monday. Early voting runs through November 4th, and Election Day, of course, is coming up on November 8th. Time now, 636 and 66 degrees for now. Here's a look at what's coming up next. Climate change, it's not something everyone likes talking about, but the director of the National Butterfly Center says the matter is an urgent one. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, how climate change is impacting our pollinators. 640, the migrating monarch butterflies that stop in San Antonio every fall as they head to Mexico, also stop by the thousands at the National Butterfly Center down in Mission. The migrating monarchs were officially put on the endangered species list earlier this year, but the director of the National Butterfly Center says their research shows a much more stable population. Sarah Costas talked with the director about that hopeful study and what needs to be done to help the monarch population grow further. The migrating monarch is stopping in San Antonio as we speak, and these videos taken in my very own garden. But earlier this week, we went to visit the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas, where the monarchs will soon be swarming their native vegetation by the thousands. So what you're looking at, these are queen butterflies. They look a lot like monarchs, but they're their cousins. The monarchs will hopefully be here any day. They come through closer to Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. This is the population that was put on the endangered species list this year. Mariana White, the executive director of the National Butterfly Center, says that research done by the North American Butterfly Association documents that even though the population of Michoacan, Mexico, continues to fall dramatically, monarch breeding numbers from spring to fall are stable. The North American monarch population is stable throughout North America during the summer. Its reproduction numbers are fairly the same over the last 40 to 50 years, and that's a good sign. She says this data supports the theory that more monarchs will spend their winters in the U.S. in the future. What still remains a mystery is why the winter population in Mexico keeps falling every winter and is being studied closely. Climate change and pesticides also impacting that decline, among other things. It can depend upon weather events in the United States, wildfires, severe freezes, different things that impact the population, uh, habitat disappearance, drought. The reason so many monarchs stop at the center every year on their journey is because they can smell nectar miles away. It's why she says a push for wildflowers along our highways is a bad idea and in turn can hurt the migrating population. Attracting butterflies, and monarchs to highways where they wind up on our windshields. But then there's also pollution, air pollution, and other runoff from construction materials. The best way to do your part, Wright says, is for everyone to plant native pollinating plants and milkweed in their home gardens and businesses. To learn about the wild flowers and grasses and shrubs and trees that belong where they live and support wildlife. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Weather's coming up. Stephen jump yes. starts things with uh, traffic and we're kind of watching and waiting. Yeah, right now it's calm. Uh, we can get a shot at Trans Guide and show you how quiet the roads are looking right now. Uh, thankfully, there's nothing major to show you if you can take a look out there. Uh, let's go ahead and give you a wide look around town. If we can move that camera in, show you a little bit of what you can expect. Ten at days of all, it's been quiet throughout the morning in both those east and westbound lanes. But as you take a look over here, we have 35 at Main. Traffic is definitely getting moving there. A lot more folks out 
out on the north and southbound lanes, and that's good because we want people to take advantage of these empty roadways as much as they can. We know that uh, it is obviously going to get a lot busier as those uh, storms do move in, but just remember to take it slow out there. There's really no need to rush. Thankfully, I've not noticed any incidents that have been reported just yet. Uh, let's go ahead and just get you to the map, and what we are seeing <coughs> now are just uh, the light buildup there. You can see it over there along State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio, just inside Loop 1604, and within the last few moments, you just notice that a crash popped up right here along 37. We'll have to take a closer look and find out exactly if we can get a view of the conditions out there, but we know that thankfully it is still quiet for the most part right now. We get it back here. Check out US 90 at Couples. The commute is getting rolling. Mike, we're expecting a pretty busy morning. Yeah, and uh, the rain is just right on the doorstep of Bear County as of right now. There may be actually a couple of showers out there, and I'll show you this picture. This is 410 and uh, I-10 looking down to the southwest. It almost looks like it's gotten murkier looking, and there are a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers that are showing up on radar in and around town. So first of all, when you show up to the north, that's where the uh, severe weather is up around uh, Lano, Burnett counties. But this line of storms, and as you can see, it extends from, well, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, down in toward Medina, Hondo, Divine, and it's this cell right here that is causing some concern. It almost, though, looks like, when I was just about to say, it looks like it's been kind of growing a little bit. Now, as far as the number of lightning strikes, is not quite as much, but this thing, there was a, a special weather statement issued by the, the Weather Service about this 40 mile per hour winds associated with it. Now it has to reach 60 to actually become severe, but you definitely have to watch it with this cell. And as you can see, that intense uh, kind of purple shade right there, that's all the very heavy rain that's coming down. So rainfall rates with this cell as of right now, uh, some of the estimates on radar, some of these spots right there, anywhere from say seven to close to eight inches per hour doesn't mean you'll get that much rain because this cell is actually moving at anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour uh, to the east and so it's just going to be one of those where it's like getting buckets of rain dumped on top of you also as far as any hail there have been a couple of reports of a little bit of hail associated with this. There is not much that is being estimated by uh, by radar as of right now, but a little bit of hail right there in northern Frio County. So not a lot, but don't be surprised if there is maybe some uh, kind of marble sized hail, about half inch diameter hail it has to get up to quarter size, roughly an inch in diameter to be considered severe. So once again, this uh, whole system is working its way to the east at roughly uh, 40 to 50 miles per hour. So as far as when it's going to be reaching town, the estimates right now, there's the line right there along some of the, the say, heavier downpours. Again, coming to the east at 40 to, let's call it 45 miles per hour. So that's going to be working its way in towards SeaWorld just after 7 o'clock, Northwest Vista just after 7 o'clock, and then Taft High School just after, again, 7 o'clock. So it will continue to work its way into San Antonio in the next uh, a couple of minutes and also a little bit closer in town. As you can see, there are just a couple of these light little sprinkly showers that have started to show up around here. So don't be surprised if there are a few of those light showers around. Then the heavier rain will continue, obviously, to work its way on in here with some of the uh, the lightning strikes on top of that. Now, as far as rainfall, or excuse me, as far as the uh, computer models, boy, I'll tell you one thing, got to hats off to these things. They have, you can almost set your watch by them as far as how they accurately looked at these cells working their way in. So this is going to continue to move through the area right during the heart of the commute as you know everybody's going to school, everybody's going to work in the next couple of hours, and then it's going to move out of here fairly quickly. We'll still have some leftover off to the east, obviously, but we will uh, see an end to the rain here by late morning. Wind will shift around to the northwest, very blustery, and then we will continue to clear out throughout the afternoon. A lot of sunshine today, good looking night tonight but it's also going to be very windy tonight. Also, it is going to be on the windy side tomorrow. So the forecast, we will have the showers, some thunderstorms, some heavy downpours. That's the thing we're really going to have to deal with the most, just the very heavy downpours right during the heart of the morning commute. 73 degrees today at noon, windy conditions. High makes it up to 78. Normal high temperature today. Very, very windy. A lot of sunshine out there. Good looking night tonight. It is going to be on the, the windy side. Tomorrow, we start off kind of on the cool side. 
and then only make it up to the uh, low 70s. So a good fall day tomorrow, Sunday as well. Monday, now more clouds around here, 77 degrees, then a chance for a couple of those uh, showers around on Tuesday. So once again, we've been saying all morning long, leave now. If you're in yeah. town, you know, <laughs> avoid some of those heavy downpours around here. And we go off the air at 7 o'clock. Justin Horn is here. He and I are going to be on our app cast. So you can look at this on the, the KSAT weather app. We're going to continue to track all these storms. If anything mm -hmm. pops up, perhaps if anything becomes severe, just keep that. And yeah. don't forget, if you have the Weather Authority app, make sure you have your notifications yes. enabled so that you can get the very latest from our guys as well. But don't look at it while you're driving. No, I was watching you and watching the app at the same time, and the you know that looks pretty scary, the radar. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's some heavy downpours, yeah. nothing severe in our area as of right now. A lot of heavy rain and some pretty blustery winds, though, and we're going to be dealing with that all day. Okay, all right. more you. to come on that all morning long right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, and all our apps, 649, 66 degrees. And tomorrow on GMS say Halloween is almost here and for kids with allergies knowing which candies they can and cannot eat can be a little confusing so we're going to share some helpful advice to keep everyone safe this Halloween. Calm before the storm outside with live cam. Mike says a few showers are already starting to pop up. Your windshield wipers they could get a workout this morning. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of GMA, we'll have the latest on Elon Musk officially taking control of Twitter and already making moves. Plus, Diane Sawyer is back with more of her exclusive interview with Matthew Perry on his hard-fought addiction battle and the friends who reached out. We're also celebrating homecoming at Florida A&M University. We're going to show you how the FAMU family does it right. That and so much more on GMA. San Antonio police say a woman and two young children who were stabbed in an east side home are victims of family violence. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They also found a man here who they say was stabbed and shot, and they say he is the suspect in this case. The police got that call around 3 o'clock this morning. All of those people were taken to various hospitals by ambulance. Police have not released any details on what led up to the violence. They told us only that the woman and children who are four and five years old were stabbed inside a home Home, and the man is to blame. They told us the five-year-old is in critical but stable condition. Now, for some reason, police did search two different apartments here in the 500 block of Burleson. Uh, they would not tell us exactly why both homes were involved, but they did say that they collected some evidence here. Uh, police were not able to offer us any other details, but they did say that the man in this case is the suspect in the stabbing of the three other people. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We are keeping a close eye on the roadways right now. We have a shot of 1604 at Babcock. Looks a little murky out there, but of course, watch out because traffic is getting moving. Already have a lot of folks out there and it is morning rush, so expect to see a lot more activity out there. Those downpours are expected, but right now I would say you could still take advantage of the roadways. Be on the lookout. I-10 westbound at 37. A crash popped up on our map earlier, but not seeing anything on the trans guide cameras yet. Overall view of the map does show that it is starting to slow down a little bit, so the commute is getting rolling, guys. This picture we keep showing this one over there 10 to 410. It is getting murkier and murkier as those uh, storms are approaching and the line of rain is just now working its way into Bear County. So keeping our eye on that cell just right there uh, to the south of Divine. That's the one that's uh, producing rain at the rate of about uh, seven inches per hour. Now it is moving along very quickly, almost uh, 40 to 45 miles per hour to the east. And of course, these uh, showers and storms are going to be working their way on in here right during the heart of the commute. So the uh, the bookends up here at the desk, <laughs> Mr. Horn, Mr. Cavazos, and I are going to be doing an app cast, the yep. uh, KSAT weather app, and we're going to keep you updated starting. We got a little housekeeping to do right after this show, but just after that, get the uh, KSAT app. And we'll keep Is that something so. new that we're doing? We've been doing it for a while, but okay. you know, we, we'll be able to go on your app, on your uh, KSAT app, your KSAT weather app, and we can zero in on your neighborhood. We can get you prepared as you head off to school this morning, off to work, and we'll be with you. It's, it's the good news. We, we don't have a lot of severe weather. But this right. is just okay. uh, some impact weather that we'll be able to bring to you. And right, you'll be ready for it. Yes. They do this a lot in the evening, but the timing in the morning has never worked out because it seems like all the storms, you know, <laughs> before the, the yes. show. Right. So this is going to be a perfect opportunity. So right. we'll keep you updated on any traffic yes. problems Watch as well. Watch the app. We've got you covered. Have a great weekend. See you back at 9.